Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this session, we will be looking at some of the scenario based questions that you can expect as part of your uh, AWS. Uh, in the last sessions, I've covered some of the um, interview questions for your EC2 service. Um, so we had part one, part two, part three. Uh, so those are some of the very commonly um, asked questions when we talk about your EC2 service. Now, uh, if you're um, showing experience, like maybe three years or four years of experience, you can definitely expect uh, a lot of scenario based questions wherein the interviewer will give you a scenario and then, you know, based on your experience, uh, you will be able to answer those questions. Now, again, uh, I will be covering um, multiple uh, uh, questions, so I've divided this into multiple parts. Now, in today's session, I'll be covering part one, which will con contain uh, 10 commonly asked uh, scenario based questions for uh, AWS. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So the first question you can expect is, uh, let's say you have a web application and this web application needs to handle uh, traffic, which is fluctuating. So you have a web application which has a very fluctuating traffic. How will you design the architecture to handle the peak traffic situations whenever the application is having very peak traffic? Uh, how are you going to handle that? Now, to design for any application that has peak traffic, we can utilize your auto scaling groups. Now, these auto scaling groups will help us to uh, scale down and uh, scale up your uh, servers, your uh, machines where your applications are running. And then we can have these uh, auto scaling groups behind a load balancer. The load balancer will take care of the um, availability of the application, the performance, the fault tolerance of the application. So this way, the application can dynamically scale up or scale down based on the demand, based on the peak traffic that we have and the on the application the auto scaling groups will take care of uh, scaling up and scaling down the instances and this will ensure we have optimal performance the load balancer will ensure we have the optimal performance and also the cost efficiency so your auto scaling groups will only launch the instances when they are actually needed when only when the traffic is high if the traffic is low then it will scale down which will like remove the instances and you'll have a lower cost uh, lower usage cost all right so that's how you can handle the peak traffic the next question we have is uh, what would you consider when designing an amazon cloud solution so let's say you have been asked to uh, design a solution utilizing the services that you have in aws so what would you consider when you're designing this now See, whenever we talk about designing uh, any uh, solution, uh, there are a few key factors that we will need to consider. All right. So when we are designing an Amazon cloud solution, uh, we will have to think about the scalability of the infrastructure, scaling up and scaling down, the reliability of the infrastructure, how reliable the um, uh, infrastructure is, you know, the downtime of your applications the security of your infrastructure and the uh, application as well as your cost optimization so these are some of the key factors that we will have to keep in mind whenever we are designing any cloud solution now there are different different services that we can utilize for this now in terms of aws for the scalability purpose we can make use of your auto scaling groups for the reliability purpose we can make use of your ec2 instances for security, we can make use of your AWS IAM service. And then for the cost optimization, we can utilize your cost explorer. Now, these are some of the services we have in AWS. We have other services as well, like in terms of cost optimization, we have AWS budgets, we have trust advisor, which can be utilized uh, in terms of security. We have your uh, VPC security, uh, IAM, and other services that can be utilized. So, by addressing these aspects, we can ensure that we have a robust and efficient cloud architecture whenever we are designing a cloud solution. The next question we have is describe a successful AWS project that reflects your design and implementation experience with AWS solutions architecture. So this is more of, um, you know, uh, basically describing what are the services you have used in AWS, how you have 
utilized those services to deploy an application so uh, you can talk about any application that you might have worked on uh, most commonly would be your uh, migration application so uh, in my case i have worked with uh, uh, migrating a legacy application to the cloud so uh, in this case you can talk a bit about the application how the infrastructure was set up um, uh, maybe in the on-premise and then how what are the services that we utilized in aws to uh, move this application to migrate this application to the cloud and what are the advantages we had the benefits that uh, we had once we moved the application to the cloud so um, in terms of aws we can leverage services like your ec2 instances your rds your s3 buckets and this will help you to achieve a improved scalability so the advantage is why do we need to migrate uh, the application to the cloud. So these are some of the advantages we have. So we, we get an improved scalability, we get a high availability of the application and also the cost, the overall cost of your infrastructure is also reduced. The next question we have is, uh, when would you prefer to use provisioned IOPS over standard RDS storage? So uh, provisioned IOPS is one of the storage option. We have like the magnetic um, then provisioned IOPS, then throughput documents. So we have different different types. Now, when would you prefer using the provisioned IOPS over the standard RDO storage? Now, depending on your requirement, so you know you would choose the provisioned IOPS when the application, whatever the application that you are running, it requires consistent and predictable database performance so you need to have a consistent um, uh, performance of your uh, database especially uh, when you have very intensive input output workload so you know you have to process a lot of data um, uh, within seconds or microseconds that's when you can go with your provisioned io so this ensures that the application can handle high amounts of database transactions without compromising on the speed so you know especially like let's say your banking applications where you'll have millions of customers that uh, are are um, uh, using the application to you know handle the uh, finance you will need to make sure that the application is able to handle all of these database transactions without compromising on the speed now imagine when you, you're trying to do a transaction and it takes minutes together to perform that transaction now that's that's not a good experience from a customer's perspective right now that's where we can utilize your provisioned iops which will ensure that um, your application is giving you a better performance without compromising on the speed the next question we have is how would you right size uh, system for normal and peak traffic situation so again here um, we are talking more on designing the uh, infrastructure for handling the traffic of your application so to right size a system we would need to analyze the historical traffic pattern so you know we'll have to look at the history of the traffic uh, when was the peak traffic when was the traffic low uh, how the application was performing so we'll have to look at the historical data uh, we'll also have to look at the usage metric so you know how your cpu is being utilized your memory is being utilized your network is being utilized we'll have to look at that metrics as well and then we'll also look at the resource allocation so how much of cpu is allocated how much of memory is allocated how much of uh, network resources are allocated we will have to uh, review that as well now by predicting so by looking at this historical data we can you know do a prediction as to you know when the peak traffic will be and then accordingly design the infrastructure for that and that way we can optimize the cost and the overall performance of the application the next question we have is give an example of a situation where you were given feedback that made you change your architectural design strategy so uh, you have designed an architecture and then you give it for review you get a feedback telling that hey can you uh, change this so you know um, you'll have to talk uh, a situation on uh, basically um, an example of that so you know um, in my case i once received feedback that highlighted the need for greater redundancy 
in the architecture so the architecture that i had designed was not very redundant and uh, i got a feedback telling that you know we need to increase the redundancy which will reduce the downtime of the applications like you know um, maybe you want to increase the storage now we know that when we talk about your ec2 instances if we want to let's say change the instance type uh, we'll need to stop the instance and then change the instance type now there's a downtime associated with that how can we avoid that so how can we make the application redundant enough to handle that right so this prompted me to redesign the system so um, uh, we incorporated multi-region redundancy so we had the infrastructure spread across multiple regions and this help uh, by uh, also by utilizing the fault tolerant components like your auto scaling groups your load balancers where have we have multiple servers behind the load balancer so that way um, we, we improved the architectural design of the application which made uh, the performance of the application was much better the next question you can expect is what do you think aws is missing from a solutions architects perspective right, so it's more of a uh, generic understanding what you like what you don't like about um, aws now see aws offers you a wide range of services there are so many services in aws and aws has services for almost all the use cases that you can imagine however it would be more beneficial if you had more granular control over the network traffic within the vpcs right so uh, we uh, we don't have more granular control it's more of allow deny the source uh, the destination and all but we don't have a granular control over this uh, if we can have more granular control over the network traffic inside the vpcs this would provide greater flexibility in designing very complex network architecture so when you want to talk about designing the uh, infrastructure from a network perspective it will give us more flexibility uh, if you have more granular control over this network resources the next question you can expect is imagine google decides to host uh, youtube.com on aws so how would you design the solution architecture so you know let's say google wants to host this youtube.com application on aws so what will be your design architecture now if google hosted youtube.com on aws then we have to make sure now we know that youtube uh, we have millions of users who are using this um, at the same time so we have to make sure that the application is scalable it is fault tolerant so we can utilize services like ec2 uh, rds s3 cloudfront for different different use cases uh, which will uh, uh, help us to make sure the application is fault tolerant scalable again we can utilize your auto scaling groups your load balancers and many more services so this would ensure that the website can handle massive traffic while maintaining high availability of the application as well the next question you can expect is how will you design an e-commerce application using aws services so suppose you you are working in an uh, company that uh, hosts e-commerce applications so what all services you will utilize in aws to run this application so when designing an e-commerce application again we are talking about some of the common services like the ec2 service for as web servers where we can host our applications uh, rds as our database s3 for storing all the product images uh, cloudfront for the content delivery so you know if making the data highly available we can leverage all these services to uh, host the e-commerce application now this combination will ensure we have a secure scalable and efficient shopping experience now obviously ec2 instances will be behind load balancers and these load balancers will be behind auto scaling groups which will help us to make the application highly available as well as fault tolerant the next question we have is how can you improve the website's page load time for users so let's say we have an application called xyz.com and that application is taking um, you know few seconds to load now how can we improve that how can we reduce the load time so that the user can access the application much faster 
Now to improve the page load time, we can um, consider measures like caching the static content on Amazon S3. So again, here we are talking about using the CloudFront service and the S3 service to uh, distribute the data. So CloudFront is your uh, uh, content delivery network. We can use that to cache the uh, data and then we can have this data from the S3 bucket to you know have the data highly available. Um, we can also uh, additionally we can also optimize the database performance and we can utilize the auto scaling group capabilities which can further enhance the overall user experience. So it's it's all about using the EC2 services, the load balancers, the auto scaling groups. Uh, S3 buckets, cloud funds, which will help us to uh, improve the overall performance of the application, like the load time of the application. Uh, we can leverage all these services. Now, that's about the 10 questions that I have as part of your uh, scenario based questions for AWS. Now, these are very commonly um, asked questions, so you can definitely you know go through this and uh, that's all I have for this uh, session. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.